Now for our featured story of the day. Forbes just released a article entitled Trump Sparks Talks of Bitcoin as a Strategic Reserve assets. So let's break this article down as well as the latest feedback from the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, who called for a global hash war many years ago before it became popular. So check this out. This is the article, uh, again, published by Forbes, the headline I just read to you. Here's Mr. Trump. Do you think he would actually make Bitcoin a strategic reserve asset? I want to know your thoughts because we shared a quote uh, the other day. Uh, do I have it pulled up? I don't. I'll share it later here in a bit. So let's first read the story. Then I'll read uh, some of the feedback from Max Kaiser. So here's what he said. We all want the remaining Bitcoin to be made in the United States of America. Let's go. In the true social post last month, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump expressed strong support for the biddies. In the same post, he recognized the geopolitical significance of the world's largest crypto, warning that any policy that seeks to hamper Bitcoin only helps China and Russia. Trump's statement not only positioned him as the first pro-Bitcoin nominee of a major political party, it also put a spotlight on discussions about classifying Bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset. I don't know how accurate that statement is because I do recall uh, Ram Sawani, who was running as Republican, who's very pro-Bitcoin as well. In fact, many believe that him in Trump's ear telling him what to do with all the Bitcoin related ish. But let me know your thoughts. Also, we had Robert Kennedy Jr., who is now running uh, independent, who was initially running as a Dem, who's also pro-Bitcoin, at least according to the speeches and also speaking at the major Bitcoin conferences. I even hear Trump is going to be speaking at Nashville, which would be major, obviously, as it's the largest Bitcoin event. And uh, I think he's going to get all the support of everyone in crypto because we all know Biden is very anti-crypto. Hence, Mr. Gensler, Senator Warren, Janet yelling, and the rest of the three stooges, as Kiyosaki refers to them out as, but I digress. These discussions are gaining traction in policy circles, thanks to Bitcoin-friendly political leaders. Former presidential candidate Ram Sawani, who I was just referencing, for example, has been advising Trump on Bitcoin and digital assets since January. I assume that. I didn't even know if that was, like, you know, legit, but there you have it. Ram Sawani staked a unique position in the final weeks of his campaign by proposing that the dollar be backed by a basket of commodities that in time could include the King Crypto, BTZ. Ram Sawani's plan echoed a similar proposal from independent presidential candidate Kennedy Jr., in which a small percentage of the U.S. Treasury bills would be backed by hard currency, by gold, silver, platinum, or Bitcoin. The intent behind Ram Sawani and Kennedy's proposals is to curb inflation by pegging the dollar to deflationary assets that maintain their value over time. We also have Senator... Uh, Cynthia Lummis, the crypto queen of Congress, who is another proponent of using Bitcoin to better the nation's finances. In February of 2022, she suggested that the Federal Reserve diversify the $40 billion in foreign currencies that it held on the balance sheet by adding the biddies. And she continues to see benefits in holding the digital currency as part of the nation's financial portfolio. And after Trump's post alluding to the growing political importance of Bitcoin, I asked Senator Lummis for her perspective on discussions around Bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset. Senator Lummis appeared to be keen on the idea in her own words. Bitcoin is an incredible store value, and I certainly see the benefits of our country diversifying its investments. Now we have Trump, Lummis, Kennedy, and Ram Sawani, who represent the new crop of policymakers who are open to the potential of Bitcoin as a tool of economic statecraft, whose name was not included in that. Biden. Womp womp. So how would the United States leverage a digital commodity like Bitcoin to strengthen its own fiscal health and geopolitical uh, position? Let's discuss it. Um, according to the author of this uh article. They reached out to Alex Thorne, the head of firm-wide research at Galaxy Digital, and Thorne written extensively on the impact that Bitcoin could have on the global financial system, and he sees merit in the idea of Bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset. Quitting him here, as a global decentralized commodity money with sound properties, Bitcoin will undoubtedly play a grow <laughs> growing role in geopolitical and international trade. What started as hobbyists using their home computers has elevated into industrial manufacturing institutional portfolios and corporate balance sheets. 
there is every reason to believe that the Bitcoin network layer will expand further to include nation states. Can you say Bitcoin global hash wars family? Here is the logic behind Thorne's thinking. As with any scarce commodity, be it oil, gold, or rare earth minerals, countries often engage in fierce competition with each other to secure the lion's share of the resources. We refer to this in Bitcoin as game theory. And as one of the scarcest commodities on planet Earth, there's little reason to believe Bitcoin would be any different, especially if its value continues to grow as many financial experts expect. And as case in point, Jurian Timmer, Fidelity's director of Global Macro, described Bitcoin as exponential gold, where to achieve parity with gold's current market cap. A single Bitcoin would be approximately 700000 per coin, or more than 10 times its worth today. The potential of such strat uh, stratospheric returns makes it all the more enticing for sovereigns to accumulate Bitcoin now instead of waiting for other countries to do it first. Despite the lack of any coherent Bitcoin strategy, the U.S. currently leads the digital gold rush. It is the largest nation state holder of Bitcoin, having seized the bulk of its Bitcoin stack from illicit actors over the last decade. It's just hilarious that the reason they're the largest hodler or hoarder of Bitcoin is because they have seized it it's just funny to me. The country also boasts that the most network knows hash rate and Bitcoin mind share of any other country in the world. So if Trump were to win in November, the nation would have its first pro Bitcoin president. These factors place the United States in a strong position to become the microstrategy of nations. That's powerful. Should that be a policy priority for a future administration. And of course, we have case studies which are already massively successful with El Salvador adopting Bitcoin, uh, you know, first publicly, or I should say, MicroStrategy, the first publicly traded company to adopt Bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset and put it on the balance sheet was back in 2020. Then the following year, El Salvador with Bukele, they made Bitcoin country in El Salvador, making it legal tender. And naturally, there has been phenomenal growth with both those you know what I mean? Um, scenarios. So there you have it. Now I want to share some of the feedback from Max Kaiser. He tweeted, as predicted back in 2019, when I coined the term global hash war to describe nations switching from trying to ban Bitcoin to hoarding Bitcoin as a strategic reserve. I was the lone voice at the time. Now it's common knowledge. Note Jason Lowry plagiarized the idea some years later. He's referring to the book uh, that Jason uh, published. Now he also recently tweeted and, you know, I find Max not only awesome, but he's hilarious. He's also a comedian because you got to keep in mind. Um, I shared a clip when he actually opened up for Jerry Seinfeld. It was like a black and white clip back in the days. Max, very young. But anyways, he wrote this and it's hilarious. While Trump was still getting peed on by Russian hookers, <laughs> we were already winning the global Bitcoin hash war. El Salvador is Bitcoin country. And you got to give it to him because El Salvador is the first Bitcoin country. Can America follow in its footsteps? It can. Is it the most likely scenario? I don't know. You let me know your thoughts, fam. How do you think this will likely play out? And shout out to the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser. So there you have it, family. Do you think they will, America that is, Trump, make Bitcoin a strategic reserve asset if he wins the presidency? Let me know in the live poll. And uh, in a little bit, we'll end the poll, read the results. Welcome, everyone, to the live Q&A segment of the stream.